Sprint markets its ZTE Optics 7 inch tablet as the perfect family tablet thanks to its $99 price tag. Essentially, what you do is you pay for a two year data plan, uh, and Sprint will knock off hundreds of dollars on the price. In their marketing literature, they literally say that dropping it in the toilet will be no big deal because you didn't pay as much as, say, an iPad. So that's all well and good, but the problem is that the tablet itself isn't exactly exciting. Um, if you look at the outside, it's got a standard design. Uh, it's got a nice black bezel around the 7-inch screen. The screen is actually fairly bright. It's a little fuzzy in some of the videos that we took, but it's, it's acceptable. Um, what we didn't like, however, was that at certain points, uh, especially up here around the edge uh, and up here around this edge, it would get up to 105 degrees. And generally, we think that anything over 95 is uncomfortable. So, I mean, you're not exactly going to be touching these areas, but still, it's, it's a drawback. We also didn't like the speakers, which are located right here on the bottom. Uh, they kind of sit here, uh, where you would generally hold the tablet, and they didn't put out the best sound uh, quality at all, really. Um, when we were listening to things like uh, bass-heavy songs, it had a lot of warble to it, uh, had a lot of distortion, and when we would listen to more treble-heavy songs, there was a lot of tinny action to it. Um, so it's not exactly something that you want to put down at a desk, walk away, and you know try to listen to your music. Chances are you're probably just going to try and connect the headphones to it, because when you do that, it sounds perfectly fine. We actually enjoyed the fact that there were hand grips on the back here. It's a, a little textured plastic. It's not you know exactly uh, going to save you from dropping it that much, I mean, unless you're really gripping it super hard. But it's better than using the, uh, the slippery kind of plastic back here. Uh, around the entire tablet itself. The problem being uh, over here though is, as you can see, this is the camera, the rear camera. When you put your fingers up here, you kind of cover up the camera. So you can leave a lot of fingerprints on the camera, put some smudges on there, and you don't exactly want that if you're going to be using this on the regular. But uh, with that said, the camera doesn't take the best images, uh, really. We got uh, some shots outside in our in, outside of our Manhattan office, and they were kind of blurry. Uh, action shots just streaked all over the place. Cab zooming by looked really crummy, basically. Um, video didn't look very good either. There was a lot of distortion to it. Uh, it felt like there was a lot of cutting and jagged edges. Um, there's also a front-facing camera, as you can see right here. Um, that isn't exactly too good either. Uh, as far as front-facing cameras go, it's passable, but uh, you're going to get kind of uh, poor coloring, uh, a lot of oranges, uh, we noticed. Um, so it's not exactly the greatest camera. It's not you know up to, say, iPad level. Uh, in terms of things that we did like about this tablet, obviously the initial $99 price tag is really fun. Uh, the fact that it's got a sturdy feel to it. Um, the problem, though, is uh, uh, going back to the price at $99, that is only for the initial uh, cost. What you're going to end up doing is uh, buy a two-year data plan through Sprint at $19.99 a month. And after, over time, that'll end up costing you around uh, more than $500. So essentially, what you're really paying for is the data plan. And while that's all good and great that you get data out of it, uh, it's only a 3G, 3G connection. If, if you're looking for a tablet, though, that does get online, we would suggest picking up something that might do some 4G. Um, generally, what we, we suggest is just tethering to your smartphone. It's cheaper. Uh, you already are probably paying a data fee for your smartphone, and chances are you will always have your smartphone on you, so you can always just tether, uh, do Wi-Fi tethering between the smartphone and the tablet. So with, at $99, at first glance, this looks like a very good deal, but in the long run, you're going to be paying a lot more. What we would suggest instead is going with probably a more expensive Kindle Fire for $199 as opposed to the $999 on this. You're going to pay a little bit more up front, but in the long run, you're going to be saving a lot more.